You're 17 years old. You don't have an ex-boyfriend? No. Really? Sutter, guys don't That's look at me shocking. like that. I'm like... Yeah, absolutely guys look at you like no, that. No, no, no. I just I... saw two guys looking at you like that. Uh, Eric Wolf and Cody Dennis no, were 100% hitting on No, we were just talking. You. They were 100%. not hitting on me. No, no, no. There's absolutely yes, no way. Were. Why don't you think they were hitting on you? Because I'm just, they weren't. Because you're what? Amy, you're absolutely beautiful. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> Well, compared to vampire marriage proposals or a girl fighting to the death with a bow and arrow, the new adolescent film drama, The Spectacular Now, is under-dramatized, and it is the better for it. That is the opinion of our film critic, Joe Morgenstern, and he joins me right now with Joe's take. Hey, Joe. Hello, Wendy. I, the male protagonist here, Sutter, he is a pretty far cry from Edward Cullen in Twilight. What is Sutter's appeal? Yes, no teeth, no blood, no vampire. His appeal is that his opinion of himself is very different than ours. He thinks of himself as the life of a perpetual party that's going to go way beyond high school. He talks about having to live in the now and how spectacular the now is. What we see is a kid who's made no plans for the future, who's stuck in the now, and who's bound for anything but glory. The girl that he meets in this film, she is not really stuck in the now. She has very specific projections for the future. How does their relationship affect each other's opinions of where they are now and where they will be? Well, I don't want to tell you where they will be, and there's a question of where they will be. But in the now that they share, uh, this girl whose name is Amy Finicky is played by Shailene Woodley, if you remember her from her wonderful performance as the older sister in The Descendants. This, this girl gives nice, a, a good reputation. She makes nice interesting. She makes nice smart, intelligent, and enormously appealing. And together they're a, an unmatched pair, but you want to see them succeed. Joe, do you think there's a growing appetite right now for these sort of slower paced, more nuanced adolescent stories? I think of the film you and I talked about a couple of weeks ago, uh, a wonderful film. You liked it too, called The Way, Way Back, which sort of tells a slow adolescent story. Uh, do you think the appetite's growing for this category? I don't know about the slow. And the, the truth is the movie is a little slow for my taste. And I sat there in the screening room making notes about wishing it were this and wishing it were that. And then I realized I'm just enjoying this enormously. You know, let it happen. Join the fun. Joe, this film is by the same writers of the movie The 500 Days of Summer, which to me is a very classic, very real feeling story of young adult angst and love. How does this one stack up against 500 Days of Summer? Well, I think I didn't like 500 Days of Summer as much as you did. I admired it. I knew that it was going to find the audience that it did, but it, it seemed awfully schematic and more an exercise in style than substance. This movie is quite different. It's much more substantial, much more nuanced. The same writers have used uh, someone else's material, a, a, a very good, well-considered novel by a writer named Tim Tharp, and it's all to the good. They've got emotional riches to work with, and I must say they, they work extremely well with them. All right, Joe, I look forward to seeing this after I do. You and I can compare notes about this in 500 Days of Summer. Always love talking to you. Thanks for being with us. Love talking to you, too. Thanks, Wendy. See you next week. Bye. Yeah. Okay, Dan, thank you. Uh, incidentally, would you tell Wendy and Kate that I will be off next week on vacation and back the following week? Thank you. Bye.